Food Farm Talk on CFRU 93.3 FM. Welcome to another edition of Food Farm Talk where we celebrate food and honor those who champion the cause of food in society. Welcome to another exciting edition of Food Farm Talk on CFRU 93.3. This is your host, Emily Duncan. The show is also hosted by Abdul Rahim Abdullahi. And this morning, we are talking about an exciting agricultural event that happens every year, and that's the Canadian Outdoor Farm Show. So I, this event is really exciting because it's all about the latest innovations in agriculture. Um, agribusinesses from across the province gather in Woodstock, Ontario, and put on this huge, huge exhibition that farmers attend to learn about new technologies, new innovations, and ways that they can improve their businesses. This event attracts over 40,000 attendees over three days, and there's 750 exhibits. And it includes things like field demonstrations, crop demonstrations, there's livestock there. It's a really, really exciting time for farmers to um, get out, meet each other, learn some new things uh, before harvest starts. And so this event, the Canadian Outdoor Farm Show, happens every fall. Um, and this year it has been on September 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, so it runs for three days. And we wanted to just cover um, a little bit about the exciting things that were presented at the Outdoor Farm Show this year. So on the show with me today, I have two guests who attended the farm show this week, um, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Okay, hi, um, my name is Sarah Marquis, and I'm a second year master's student um, working at the University of Guelph, and um, my advisor is Dr. Evan Fraser, and we're looking at how um, precision agriculture technologies are kind of changing farming practices and what could be the social impacts of um, using these technologies on farms and in agriculture. Um, and I went to the farm show yesterday and it was my first farm show ever <laughs> um, but it was it was uh, really amazing to see um, to see everyone so excited about like different things that could help them with their operations and um, it was really educational for me um, because I don't come personally from a farming background but it's really interesting to talk to farmers about um, what they're doing and how they're changing their operations in kind of like the context of new technologies and new innovations. Awesome, thanks for being here Sarah. And uh, I'm Aidan O'Brien. I'm a first year graduate student at the University of Guelph uh, working with Dr. Eric Nost. And uh, I'm interested in precision conservation tools, uh, specifically mapping technologies, um, and how do you kind of enable some conservation on the farm um, in partnership with farmers. Thanks for being here, Aiden. And so both of you went to the farm show this week. And uh, Sarah, you mentioned it was the first time that you'd have attended this. What about you, Aiden? Had you heard of the Canada's Outdoor Farm Show before? Um, honestly, I had heard of it through Twitter like a week before. Uh, There's a lot of buzz kind of online. Um, people were obviously really excited about it happening, but I had never been personally. Okay. And so what was your general impression of this event? Um, for me, it just kind of it was incredibly well planned. <laughs> that was like my first impression. It was like kind of incredible to see how much work had been put into um, getting like equipment there to do demonstrations. Um, there was so much kind of land set aside specifically for uh, this event, and like you could just see how much work had been putting into had been put into this. And so I think that the people who are planning it, like they really kind of take pride in what they do, and that's really awesome to see because it's so important for so many farmers. 
Yeah, it takes a lot of coordination to put together an event that has over 700 um, exhibits and that you're expecting 40,000 guests to sh- arrive over three days. So it must it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What were your impressions, Aiden? I was really surprised by the scale for sure and um, just the amount of machinery that was there. That was that was kind of surprising for me. They had all the new models of tractors and um, planters and, and stuff like that. So uh, it was a, a big space. It took us a long time to kind of <laughs> walk around and see uh, mm-hmm. everything. Um, but they did have very kind of organized um, areas with um, livestock and with cropping. And then they also had a nice like Ducks Unlimited wetland pond, which mm-hmm. I really appreciated. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds really interesting. And so I'm interested in hearing a, like a few more details about, yeah, some of the things you saw. You mentioned the machinery and the mm-hmm. livestock. Mm-hmm. And so the focus of this event is really about innovation. So what were some of the, the newest, latest and greatest um, of for the farm that you saw at the Can- Canada's Outdoor Farm Show? Yeah, like we saw a um, couple different things. Like there were different like crop plots that you could see like different types of seeds and how they were growing, and that was really cool. I've never actually like seen that at a uh, an event before. Um, there was also like fertilizer um, spread demos, so you could see like different uh, machinery like going across the field spreading fertilizer. Um, but I, I mean, I would have to say that the the we saw um, an autonomous. Um, I guess it's called an autonomous platform, but it's kind of like an autonomous tractor, um, which kind of uh, fits into other like farm implements um, that can be driven uh, autonomously, um, but like using the help of an iPad. I think it's called the DOT. uh, It's like a standardized autonomous power unit, um, which was kind of crazy because I've never seen um, an autonomous tractor before. (laughs) And yeah, like, did you enjoy that show too? Yeah, that was definitely like highlight of the day. Day, um, just seeing this thing that looked like it was from space, like mm-hmm. a Mars rover or something um, being used on the farm. And I think uh, from what I kind of gathered, people at the show were really interested in that demonstration. And um, there was like a huge gathering when we, were, when we were watching the demonstration. So I think farmers in general were really excited about these kind of new tools. Um, and they, they are very new. I think they're just starting to um, like ship them. Um, and they still are kind of... Um, figuring out their their supply chain there, um, but it is like brand new technologies, so it was it was exciting. That sounds so cool. Like I'm thinking, I'm trying to imagine what this thing is like. And so there's we you know there's lots of buzz about driverless cars and Teslas and things like that. And so this is a driverless tractor. There's nowhere for someone to sit on it? Yeah, exactly. I think they were actually talking about how it used the similar technologies um, that Teslas and kind of autonomous cars use, um, like the optical cameras. Um, And yeah, it looked like it weighed next to nothing. There was lots of like holes in it and kind of areas um, for other farm implements to be added in. Um, And kind of spitballing on the weight thing, um, it was actually talked about how it would decrease soil compaction because of the tractor's weight, uh, which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah, so there's not only just like the labor benefits of using this type of technology, but it's also better environmentally for improving soil health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And um, saving time and and, and money as well. So um, I think it cost around 360,000, I believe it was. Yeah, so, Canadian, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of money still, but uh, in comparison to some of the other large tractors and sprayers and stuff, it was fairly competitive for like a brand new um, uh, tool on the, on the market. Yeah, I think I've been kind of reading about how difficult it is to actually get autonomous um, like vehicles, even like the cars, but like autonomous vehicles on the f- on the farm, and to see one actually um, being used was pretty incredible. Because I didn't know that we were we were there yet. Like I didn't, I fully didn't know that um, they they're also like commercially available. I had no idea, um, and it was just pretty incredible to see. Like. It's really exciting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they did seem pretty forthcoming about sort of the restrictions that the autonomous tractor had at the moment. Like, uh, if it runs into any problems uh, in the field currently, it kind of just stops. Um, But they were talking a lot about how um, the software is being developed and you would have access to those kind of um, developed uh, tools as they come available. So you can kind of just, like, update your tractor. And now it's smarter than it used to be. 
So that's cool. Yeah, I can imagine that there's uh, farmers might be concerned about the risks of using some kind of autonomous tractor that you don't want it to, you know, hit a fence and barrel through into your neighbor's <laughs> field and or, you know, get stuck in a ditch. How is it going to get out? Like these kinds of things. <laughs> I was reading uh, um, online because I was on their website this morning and I was looking at um, like the farmer kind of plans the path that the machine is going to take now. So it kind of the farmer has to approve um, like where the where the machine is going to go. Um, but I think that they're working on that technology. But as of right now, it's kind of like they plan um, so that it can avoid the obstacles in the fields, mm -hmm. which I think is great. That's awesome. Yeah. And so like these are just, you know, hot off the line technologies. What do you think about the future of these types of things? Is this is this the direction that farming's going um, towards more uptake of autonomous um, autonomous machinery? Personally, I think we're going to see kind of a divergence. We're going to see, yes, the autonomous um, and large scale farming tools coming more into practice um, alongside smaller scale farms uh, being more popular and even more like gardening and, and urban farming, vertical farming, stuff like that. Um, so I think yes, and, and in other ways they will mm -hmm. change as well. So I think it is it truly is like a gigantic investment as well. So it's like the farms that can make this investment are probably already really big. So you're getting this these like um, autonomous technologies on big, big farms. So I think that definitely I agree that there's like a two, two directions kind of emerging when it comes to technology, like small scale and, and large scale. And I think autonomous falls in the, the large scale category. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, with more data being pulled off of the farm now as well, uh, you will see an increase in autonomous um, and even just like smart tractors, not necessarily autonomous, but being able to kind of uh, use data, um, use Wi-Fi, use GPS, use cellular data um, to kind of uh, combine the data that's being pulled off of, of the farm to make uh, better management decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that that's so interesting. And it sounds like this autonomous tractor was a big hit at the Outdoor Farm Show. Definitely. Um, and you also mentioned, so the Outdoor Farm Show, it's not just for for crop farmers. There's also a livestock component, too. Um, in terms of that, what was kind of the latest and greatest innovation in the live livestock sector? Um, yeah, well, we went to the livestock kind of barn, um, and we saw uh, the Lely... Lily um, robotic milker, which it was um, like I, something I've been reading about for so long, but I haven't ever actually seen one being used. Um, and I think that with robotic milking, you can kind of just see the immediate effects of like how this improves um, or like reduces the need for manual labor because it just um, seems to do everything that that uh, the farmer. Um, would be doing on the floor so that they can now using a robotic milker they could perhaps like use their labor for something different and then so it changes the kind of entire practice of um, dairy farming mm -hmm. yeah. and animal welfare as well like the cows uh, were just kind of going into the robotic milker on their own and they looked super like content mm -hmm. with how it was being done um, and those I'm not really a dairy person but those big um, kind of wheels, brushes. the big brushes that the cows were kind of rubbing against. Uh, they really seem to enjoy that. Uh, I think we saw a robotic feeder as well, which I've I had never seen before. It was kind of like picking up uh, feed and kind of transporting it across the barn, um, which I thought was really cool. Mm -hmm. And the feed pusher, like it pushes the feed closer to the cows, which is also like something that reduces manual labor. Um, it's also, yeah, it's great to see that. Yeah, and so I've worked a lot with uh, robotic milkers, but for our listeners who maybe don't understand or trying to visualize what a robotic barn looks like, you know, we have um, the feed pusher buzzing around on its own, pushing feed close, um, a ro robotic manure scraper going across the floor, oh, yep. um, and, you know, a uh, robotic arm moving uh, uh, grain from one side of the barn to the next. But then in terms of the milker, how exactly does that work? Um, so there's kind of like a, I'll call it like a capsule that the, the cow walks into when they want to be milked. Um, and then uh, the kind of the robotic milker kind of comes underneath uh, with um, 
with the like the milker implement and m- milks the cow when they want to be milked and then the cow kind of just like exits uh when it's finished and i think that also the data that's being collected from that machine isn't just like how much milk is being produced by the cow but it's ha- like whether the cow is dealing with health problems or like what you said before animal welfare it's easier to track uh the health of your herd using one of these machines um and you can kind of see that when you're looking at the robotic milker because it's there's so many sensors and things that can pick up on you know health yeah so the collection of data it's not just happening with the crops by autonomous tractors but also robotic milkers are gathering lots of data for livestock farmers Mm -hmm. super cool stuff and so in thinking about um You know, you were there and observing all these kinds of different innovations um, and demonstrations. Um, But as graduate students, you didn't just go there for the fun stuff. (laughs) What what was the real reason that brought you to Canada's Outdoor Farm Show? Right, yes. So I am doing a a survey um, and I'm targeting uh, Canadian crop farmers because I'm looking at the use and practices of precision agriculture technology. So I want to know what kind of technologies farmers are using, which ones they're not using, um, what kind of barriers to adoption they're facing, um, and what they think, like, and what their perceptions are on the impacts of technological innovation uh, in agriculture. And especially now that we're kind of looking at a lot more digital technologies in agriculture. I just want to know how farmers uh, kind of are relating to these technologies and what they think about how they will impact the future of uh, the sector. Mm -hmm. And I will say um, the most people that we talk to for the survey, um, you know, the average age of the farmer is probably over 40. So it it is interesting to talk to these people um, who have kind of seen the digital and technological revolution um, and see how they're kind of adopting their own practices to um, use those technologies. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking at um, how farmers are using the agricultural data that's coming off of these technologies. And um, one thing that I'm really interested in in my research is kind of the ownership arrangements around agricultural data. So the data is being generated by these digital technologies and who actually owns the data? Is it farmers? Is it the software companies? Um, And how is it being used? And kind of like what farmers perceive concerns or benefits to this kind of um, scenario to be. Mm -hmm. It's really not that much different from like social media data use. Definitely. It's a cool parallel to draw for sure. Yeah, and so a lot of um, what was being demonstrated at the farm show was the demonstration of the technologies that are collecting the data, but the survey kind of taps into a bit deeper than that of trying to understand what are the data management Mm -hmm. practices of farmers, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that everyone Um, probably everyone at that farm show knows that agricultural data is like immensely valuable. And I just want to know um, kind of who is benefiting from this data being collected. Um, Is it the software companies? Is it the farmer? Um, And yeah, like what what are the concerns in this uh, like environment, I guess? Um, And maybe if farmers like perceive themselves to like be uh, benefiting but not benefiting as much as they could be from this uh, situation maybe like that's a concern that i really want to pick up on on the research that i'm doing yeah it sounds like super important research and so at the farm show there weren't just equipment companies there but what about these software companies that you were talking about did you mm. see some of those were mm. they present and kind of what were those displays like yeah they were um there was a couple of them like climate field views there john deere has one there um the fcc egg expert i think that's for accounting FCC Farm Credit Canada. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, so they have one. Uh, I think that a lot of a lot of uh, these big companies, um, big companies that were, are also making machinery, are now kind of getting into the software game because they understand how beneficial agricultural data can be. Um, and yeah, it's really interesting to talk to these. Um, like the vendors and ask them like what you know how does this benefit the farmer and how like how 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 do you even use it like what because there's so many different little um things that you can be using like on your farm to collect data like sensors everywhere collect can collect data all the time and um yeah it's just like really interesting to talk to these people to see all the things 
Mm -hmm. In general, at the show, it did feel um, like precision ag was kind of this buzzword and like a lot of booths and vendors were um, advertising precision agriculture and and trying to uh, lure people in with their kind of um, visual mapping tools that are, you know, supposed to be all flashy and really easy to read and easy to understand. And um, a lot of demonstrations with like iPads and Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, these fancy sort of looking um, tools to kind of entice you to use their software because there is a lot out there. Yeah, they're really stressing like user friendliness. I guess uh, you mentioned before the the demographic was a little bit older. So um, having like a user friendly interface for whatever, whatever software you're using is really important because if farmers don't know how to use it, it's like it's really hard to get them to use something that they don't know how to use yet. But um, yeah, like some of them are incredibly user friendly. They seem incredibly user friendly um, and they're really stressing that point. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting to me to think back about how this problem, this farm show has changed over time, like even 15, 20 years ago, there wouldn't have been half the vendors with these big booths with computers and iPads trying to bring farmers in to learn this stuff. It would have been, you know, just kind of regular tractors before that, horses and plows, and now mm-hmm. we're at the stage where we're having autonomous mm-hmm. tractor demonstrations, so. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a really interesting field to be looking at, like how technology has actually um, evolved over time. And right this moment right now is really interesting just because it's like, we're looking at so many new digital technologies, whereas before it was, you know, like different tools that totally transformed agriculture. And we're just going to see how digital technologies are going to like what kind of impact they're going to have. There are definitely like a new tool in the tool shed. Um, It honestly, to me, doesn't feel that different from kind of tractors or, um, you know, newer, better tractors or sprayers. Um, It's just kind of a new... um, technological shift. Um, it is kind of a paradigm shift just because of the the digital aspect um, of the technologies. But um, like anything else, um, tools evolve, technologies evolve. Um, they mm-hmm. have to be useful. They have to be um, profitable for the farmer. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can imagine that there's kind of a divergence of opinions on on the benefits and the challenges with using these technologies. And that's something that, Sarah, your survey is trying yeah. to tease out of, like, what are these different perceptions about about yeah. digital agricultural technologies? Yeah, well, I think the thing about the survey is that it's asking specific questions about different technologies. So if you're using autonomous or kind of like auto steer tractors, which a lot of farmers are, uh, it's like a very common thing because it's, it's easy. It's easy to learn how to do and um, it's become really popular. But on the other end of that, like um, variable rate um, technology has been a little bit less uh, adopted just because um, maybe farmers don't don't see the return on investment for it yet. So it's just interesting to see the progression, I guess, and why or why not um, farmers are adopting certain technologies. Yeah, and so you've mentioned two really interesting technologies that you ask about in the survey. <laughs> um, auto steer. So this is not what we're talking about, like the demonstration of the autonomous tractor. This is where someone's sitting in the cab, mm-hmm. but g- a GPS signal is driving the tractor, correct? Yeah, so it's essentially kind of like the GPS signal is guiding the tractor around the field, but there still needs to be someone in the cab. Um, and I think that it's just like really... Um, convenient for farmers, uh, but the jump to actually autonomous tractors, we'll just see how that goes. Like, I don't, I don't know yet. Um, but uh, yes, definitely. Um, auto steer has been super helpful and a lot of farmers seem to react really positively to that. Um, variable rate application of different inputs like fertilizer. Um, it would just be like you're inputting different levels of um, fertilizer for like different parts of the field, depending on um, what like w- the characteristics of that part of the field. So it's a little bit more. It's like precision. That's why it's called precision agriculture because you're precisely looking at like each part of the field and kind of trying to um, design a, like a specific input um, like pattern for your field. Okay, so like if you had maybe a dry section of the field on Mm. one side, you plant one variety there, and maybe a wetter section, you'd plant a different variety of corn there. Yeah, that's the idea. Okay, variable rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this sounds like this survey covers some really important technologies that of precision agriculture. 
And so the, you said the survey was just for crop farmers. And are you looking at just Ontario or broader than that? I'm um, interested in Canada-wide. So it is a Canada-wide survey. Canadian crop farmers are definitely the target demographic for it. Um, I think that there's a lot of difference, like there's a lot of variability in Canada obviously, because we have different agricultural sectors in, in different regions. Um, but I think it's really interesting even to look at, like, what farmers in Saskatchewan and Manitoba and, like, the big, if they have big, you know, cash crop farms, they want to know what they're using as opposed to smaller scale farmer farmers um, maybe on the East Coast. That would be really interesting data to get. So I hope that everyone answers my survey. <laughs> yeah. No, it sounds like you're gathering really important information. And as researchers, we know that, you know, surveys are important ways of trying to get data and trying to learn about these new trends, but getting a survey out to the right respondents can be a challenge sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we did run into a few folks um, who are a little bit more resistant to doing surveys, um, whether it be time constraints or just um, less, less trust in um, academia, but uh, both are understandable. And um, I think that is kind of a key component of, of doing a good survey is, is making it very representative. Mm -hmm. I, like, I know it's a big ask for farmers because they're obviously very busy at this time of year. Um, and uh, yeah, I know, I, I know it's a big ask, but I, I do think that the research is really important. Um, and also, survey participants can be entered into a draw for free registration for either the Eastern or Western Farms.com Precision Agriculture Conference um, and Technic tech ag tech technology uh, showcase if they complete the survey. So I think that um, there's a little bit of an incentive there. And also, you're just contributing to good research. <laughs> yeah, that the industry can't move forward unless we have more information about what people's different perceptions are, what the challenges are, and that how, as academics and industry experts, can address some of these challenges if we don't have the answers from these types of surveys, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Um, answering questions like on these surveys are are so helpful um, for so many reasons and they they really do guide the technologies and um, accountability as well so when we talk about um, the newer kind of um, data driven um, farm technologies there is a lot of issues there with privacy and security and stuff like that so um, doing these surveys and kind of getting opinions of farmers um, are, are crucial to to make sure that the tools are um, developed in ways that are uh, sustainable and and properly implemented. Yeah, I, I do want to know about like the social impacts of this, uh, of like new technologies. And I, I really don't think that that research should be done without asking farmers what their perspectives are, because I think that's like the one of the key components to the research. Um, so just to kind of gauge what farmers are using, what they're not using, um, and maybe this research could even contribute to like predicting what the most useful technologies will be in the future, which I think is really important research for farmers and they will uh, benefit from the key findings. And if any of our listeners out there are crop farmers and they do want to answer this survey, mm -hmm. um, where can they where can they learn more about it? Um, right, so I'll, I'll just say the link uh, right now. So it's tinyurl.com slash PA AgTech. Um, I'll repeat that, tinyurl.com uh, slash P A A G T E C H. All right. So that's the link to the survey. Mm -hmm. And then it's also up on Twitter too, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Um, so we'll tweet out the link to the survey on Food Farm Talk um, mm -hmm. to have people have better access to it. Um, so we're kind of coming towards the end of our show. Um, we've talked about important precision ag research and mostly talked about the Canada's Outdoor Farm Show. If you had kind of one um, overall takeaway from being at the farm show this week, what, what would you say that would be for our listeners? Wow. Um, I, yeah, I just thought it was like 
I just think everyone should go, even if they're not a farmer. <laughs> um, I think that like one of the things that I'm learning from the research is that it's really important not just for farmers, but for the general public and uh, to, to know actually what's going on in your in your you know food production system. Like it's really important for everyone, and I think it's such a it was such a learning experience for me because I don't come from a farming background. Um, and I mean, I would if, if I had kids, I would take my kids to the farm show. They'd probably be amazed at all of the stuff that's going on. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like a great way to learn more about agriculture. Oh, yeah. What would you say, Aiden? Um, I would say just how intertwined technology and agriculture are and always have been, um, but it can be kind of an eye-opener. I, I know when I got to the farm show, I, I just kind of um, re-realized that this is where all my food comes from. Uh, this is the stuff that I'm eating every day and, and I love, um, and so much of it has to do with, you know, these big tractors and these um, different tools that um, farmers use and that also that each farmer is is quite different and um, there is quite a lot of differences in the technologies that they're using as well. Yeah, I know. I think that's a great message. And thank you to both of you so much for being on our show today um, to talk about your research, this big survey on precision agriculture, and for telling us about your experiences at Canada's Outdoor Farm Show. Um, this has been another episode of Food Farm Talk on CFRU 93.3 FM in Guelph. And thank you very much for listening today. Thank you for listening to Food Farm Talk. See you next week for another exciting edition.